Why do fish rarely, if ever, run into the glass of an aquarium tank? Every creature on earth has marvelous abilities that are difficult to notice to the naked eye. Processes like photosynthesis, cellular respiration, echolocation, these things never could have even been imagined without extensive research. One process um, that has been studied more recently are the lateral line systems of fish. These lateral line systems allow fish to detect water motion and changes in the pressure gradient around them. Lateral lines are composed of many small structures that are called neuromasts. Neuromasts are described by Horst Beckmann as being a sensory structure that consists of a hair cell epithelium and a cupula that connects the ciliary bundles of the hair cells with the water surrounding the fish. Neuromasts exist in both superficial and fluid fill canals, which are usually exposed through the opening of pores. These structures collect what are called hydrodynamic stimuli. These hydrodynamic stimuli include a variety of things, um, but most importantly, water disturbances and fluctuations in pressure around the fish. Um, this can be caused by a variety of factors, but for the fish, it is most useful in identifying when they approach an object or when another organism or object passes by the fish. Uh, for example, predators or, you know, rocks under the ocean. Um, some fish, like non-moving limnophilic fish, as Beckman pointed out, are not exposed to much hydrodynamic stimuli, but can instead use these lateral line systems to assess noise and vibrations for similar information. Going back to the video at the beginning, we can now understand the biology as to why fish swerve at the last second away from the glass of an aquarium. This is Dr. Douglas Jones from here at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. He is one of the lead researchers for a new artificial line technology inspired by the lateral line systems of fish. The team accomplished this by using a 500 micrometer length silicon fiber and attaching it to a computer. These fibers acted as sensors similar to the nervous system of fish and sensed changes in the water pressure by bending and transmitting a signal through the computer. When you have many of these artificial neuromass, uh, they start analyzing these changes in relation to each other and can actually identify the location of anything moving near it. These sensors were then attached to a pipe and tested by being placed in water and giving various hydrodynamic stimuli to the pipe in the water. For example, a crayfish was placed in the tub where the pipe was sitting. The sensors on the pipe picked up the presence of the crayfish and where the crayfish was in relation to the pipe. The effectiveness of this technology is what is really the most astounding part of this, as nerves aren't always easy to imitate technologically. A research team from Germany created a similar technology and applied it to an actual underwater vehicle. They named their vehicle Snooky, not for the popular figure from MTV's Jersey Shore, but rather a species of perch they studied to develop this technology. Snooky can observe changes in flow velocity thanks to a heated wire and constant quick electrical energy flow to figure out where objects are around it. Due to this ability to analyze the environment, the submarine is as much on its own as a vehicle on Mars, according to researcher Stefan Sosnowski. Snooki's independence becomes incredibly useful as it can also explore uh, deeper cabin areas as it does not have to be manned.